Hi, I'm Mike, and this is an intro. All right, so last video I did had a lot of shaky camera action. I actually don't know why I did that. The tracking function worked, but I have no idea how to disable it, so I'm going back to the usual method of not having my hands as much in the screen, just so it doesn't shake around a lot. Yeah, sorry about that last video. But yeah, in this one, I'm going to be going over Narset Transcendent. As you can probably guess, because there are certain parts missing, this is a proxy. No, also because it's bigger than the regular magic cards behind it. For, you know, again, obvious reasons, I don't have the real one because at the time of this video, it as it's not quite in print yet. Or, well, it's probably been printed, I just don't have one because they're not going to be sold for a while, but uh, yeah, besides that. Um, this is just... This card... Uh, it, uh, there are words to describe what this new Planeswalker will do. A lot of them have been used, and accurately, to describe Narset Enlightened Master when she was an EDH general, or just using her for screwing people over, and people who use those words are right. It's a really, really nasty card to go against. And this Narset, her first two abilities are actually, they're, uh, this is such a good card. Her first ability lets you fill your hand with things that she can use, or specifically, things her second ability can use. Now, it's not perfect because she does Sorcery's Instance with Rebound for her second ability, but just getting options with the first one is good. Putting cards in your hand is always good, and in white and blue, that is amazing. Now, I'm not going to go over the standard options or the modern with her. I'm sure they exist, but I'm specifically looking at the EDH applications of her. And boy, are there a few. The first one is, well, her ultimate is insane. You get an emblem that says your opponents can't play non-creature spells. Unless your opponents are doing a really creature-heavy deck, which is entirely possible. I, I run an Animar deck that is just that. I probably wouldn't notice that last ability. But almost every other deck, and anyone with an ounce of control is going to look at you and probably just walk away. And they will be right to do so because that is an insane ability. It stops almost every form of control. Technically, creature control still works, but that is the only example I can think of. And even then, that's not the most effective. Unless you're playing Linvala, in which case... everyone's shut down. But yeah. This is broken. That said, it's not too bad because it takes her a while to get up to 9. I should mention, though, that her minus 2 is pretty amazing. Especially when you add this card. Tesseret's Gambit. The double proliferate. Double because it rebounds with Narset's minus 2. Means that you're getting a net draw of 4 cards in 2 turns and paying for itself before you can use Narset again for the second turn. So, a net gain of no loss, two, four cards, for maybe the equivalent of three mana. That's not bad. The fact that it proliferates so you can hit other things, if you have other Planeswalkers, you can do them, makes it better. Yeah, not to mention all the other little shenanigans. The one I like this, though, is... It fills cards in hand that Narset can use again. If nothing else, that's good. The fact that it buffs her up more, also good. But what really makes it really, really amazing, and I just said really three times, that is pissing me off. Sorry. Eh, words. Words, words, words. But yeah, this card and Narset are amazing. Anything with Proliferate and Narset is amazing. Um, some of the other cards... I got one around here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, da -da. Well, ah, where are we? Hmm, I don't know where I put it. That's odd. But yeah, this is, ah, here we go. Contagion Engine in Narset. Double Proliferate. You can draw this up with Narset's plus one. Drop it down in turn. You'll probably have the mana because four is early enough game that by the time you get this, it might only be two turns later. Or... If Narset is copying abilities that let you increase how much mana you get, and, you know, there's a few. Black and white, 
or black and red have them. So you can probably drop this pretty soon after Narset comes out. All you have to do is pay four to this, and you can proliferate, and then proliferate again. That means using Narset's minus two with this is never going to be an issue. Add in this as the target, and you're going to start building up while using her minus two to get her ultimate. That said, you're still going to want to use the first one just because drawing cards is amazing. Drawing cards with a control function is also amazing. But then again, proliferate abilities are amazing with any planeswalker. This one just gets them into your hand faster. Especially since... Uh, where did I put that card? Yeah, I know. I'm thinking of these things off the top of my head. I actually did prepare for this, believe it or not. Huh. Hmm. Alright. I don't know... Oh, here it is. An extra roll tide. Yeah. The card that makes every planeswalker broken. Well... One of them. There's actually quite a few by this point. Inexorable Tide, though, is insane in its own right whenever you cast a spell. Narset's going to give you a lot of options to cast spells. She's going to give you more spells to cast because they do count as casting. This right there is going to churn her up really fast. Wow, that sounded a lot worse outside of my mouth than I expected. Um, yeah, I hope you'll forgive me that one. But yeah, these two have a really good interaction because she counts as casting spells. Rebound is good that way. Rebound, when accompanied with these, goes really quickly. Oh, and then there's doubling season. But I'm not going to mention that beyond the fact that I just did. But yeah, that card's evil. It's evil with Planeswalkers. If you drop Narset after doubling season's out, you might as well just have your opponent scoop because you pretty much won at that point. And... Rightfully so. This aside, though, the one thing I really like about her is that she interacts incredibly well with her earlier self. Now, I play a Narset deck. I have a couple videos of it. My last video was a really shaky version of playtesting Narset. And the big problem is with Narset, you don't want things in your hand because they're kind of dead weight at that point. But, Narset Transcendent takes care of that with her minus two. More than the plus one, more than the minus nine for the emblem, which both are amazing, but her minus two plays so well off her earlier legendary self. And in an EDH setting, which is really where Narset's the most amazing, uh, this Narset rather than this one, this one's kind of amazing regardless, but um, this one, if something's in your hand, it's pretty much dead because you have to cast it. You don't get it for free. With this version, though, it takes anything that's been stuck in your hand and gives you extra benefits by letting you use it twice. Which is not just amazing, but it takes care of the problem of things in your hand being dead because you still have something out of it. The fact that Narset, the Enlightened Master, can then play Narset Transcendent... God, I'm getting sick of saying the double names. But yeah, the fact that one can play off the other is amazing. Now this variation of Narset uh, that I like doesn't use creatures or planeswalkers too much. But I've seen some incredibly scary ones that have a lot of planeswalkers who just drop on the field wherever she swings. And, well, if they're stuck in your hand, you can get them with Narset. You could play abilities with Proliferate to build up your other planeswalkers faster with this Narset. There's a really amazing synergy where they, one enables the other. Yeah, it's just really good that, and technically, her first ability lets you know if you can use your top card or not. Now, it's not good, because if you could use it, it's now in your hand and useless. On the other hand, the problem I've had with Narset is that sometimes I get really... Okay, I should probably mention I meant this Narset as an EDH general. Sometimes, when my hand side is depleted, I'm relied to... Sorry, I'm downgraded just to attacking with her and hoping I get something to put something in my hand, or so that I get options. This one will give me options. And she's a 2-drop rather than a 6, so I can get her out sooner. And if nothing else, the biggest problem with the Narset deck is you have no defense. At least with Transcendent, if nothing else, she will give you the option of saying, Hey, guys, you'll want to get rid of this right now. Don't attack me. Just ignore me. Go for the Planeswalker.
but you can do that with any Planeswalker. The fact that this one is such a powerful card that it is insane not to go after her first means that people will. In fact, they should. The fact that it then gives you time to build up a base to play Narset and win is just an added benefit. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was mostly just me talking about how amazing this card is. And I think that's pretty self-evident because they're insane. Yeah, if you like this video, like, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Yeah. And, yay, no shaky video this time. Gotta love that. Later.